Hey guys, in this video I am going to explain about how to create virtual servers in the cloud. So before you configure any service, so to build up your infrastructure in the cloud, the first thing that you need is a virtual server. To create a virtual server, we will be using Amazon EC2 service. There are a lot of other options that we are going to cover in Amazon EC2, but we'll start with virtual server first. Before we actually create the virtual server, there are three types of instances or servers that we can create. The one is the normal instance or also called on-demand instances. So these are the instances which we create and we pay as we use it on a monthly basis. These are the spot instances. Spot instances means you have to bid for the extra resources that Amazon has. So every month Amazon releases the free quantity of the resources and sets a base price for the bid, let's say $5, and you bid for $10. So if, these, so if the cost of these resources is between $5 and $10, then you can access your instances. But anytime, if the cost exceeds $10, then you won't be able to access your instances. And reserved instances are those for which we actually pay upfront payment, and then the monthly bills will be reduced to significant percentage. For most of the environments, we'll be using the on-demand instances. So click on instance, and from here you can select the region in which you want to create the instance, and then you have to click on launch instance. So this is the wizard using which you can create an instance. So these are the templates which are actually provided right away so that you can start with it. And if you were, and if you think that uh, your operating system is not in this list, then you can go to community AMIs and search for your operating system here. There are a lot of options that are here like 32-bit instance, 64-bit instance. So you can, so you can select whatever your requirement is. And this star means that this AMI is eligible for free tier. So free tier is what we are using right now. It is just for testing purpose and Amazon does not charge anything extra for this. But there are some limits for this. If you exceed those limits, then Amazon starts charging for this. So just go to AWS free tier page and go through these limits once you get time. So for example, this thing. So we get 750 hours of Amazon EC2 per month. We got 750 hours of elastic load balancer and 15 GB of data processing. Similarly, we got 30 GB of elastic block storage. So if you exceed these numbers, then Amazon is gonna charge you. So these templates are basically based on the AMI, Amazon machine image. So you can consider AMI as an ISO. So you use ISO to boot a new instance. Similarly, we have AMIs here. Using AMI, we can boot up a new instance. So we will go with first one. Select this thing. And here you have to provide the number of instances. T1.micro type is the default free tier eligible type. And if you select anything else, you have to pay for that. And here you also get information about the CPU compute units that you're getting, CPU core and RAM in each of your instance. So we will continue with t1.micro availability zone. So every region is further divided into availability zones. So if you're not sure which availability zone you want your instance get creates in, just keep the default value. And here you can see this thing prevention against accidental termination. So Sometimes what happens is we can accidentally terminate the instance, but to prevent that thing, we can enable the security. And if you shut down the instance, what will happen? Does it stop the instance or does it terminate the instance? So keep it as stop. So this thing here is the root device which is attached with your instance. This is of 8 GB in size. And as you can see, type is root. So this is an EBS volume. So EBS volume is elastic block storage volumes. So there are two type of storage that an instance supports. One is the instance store and other is the EBS. So instance store is the storage which is not at all persistence. Whatever the data that you store in instance store that will be deleted automatically whenever your instance will be terminated. But if you attach an EBS volume with your instance and then 
keep the data on EBS volume, then your data will be safe even if your instance will be deleted. And here you have to specify your name of your server. And now if you want to access your server, you need to generate key pairs. So this is the SSH based authentication. So here you can select for create a new pair and say my new key and create and download your key pair. This is a one time process. You won't be able to generate this key pair later on. Save it in your keys folder. So then comes your security group. So this is kind of firewall. It allows you to block unwanted ports and allow only those ports which you want. For example, let's give a group name here my first group group for demo and here you can specify your port number for example ssh and this source means who will be able to access this service so if it is 000 it means anybody can access if you want to grant access only to certain ip then you can provide the ip address here and add the rule so as you can see on the right side we have allowed ssh service on this particular instance so similarly you can allow other service also so this is very much similar to your firewall and then continue now this is the summary of your instance that is going to be launched just go through with this if you want to edit anything you can and then click on your launch instance so as you can see instances are now launching it will take a couple of minutes before it actually starts running and in the meantime if you select this server you can see a couple of more options here so this is the zone in which it got created this is the instance type this is the AMI name which we used and this is the key pair name and this is the public DNS so whenever you create a new instance Amazon provides you one public DNS and one private DNS so public DNS will be used if you want to access your server outside Amazon network and if you have multiple instances running in the same availability zone in same region then you can communicate with those servers using this private DNS only so we have basic monitoring enabled here so there is an option of enabling detailed monitoring so this is something which we will be using when we configure CloudWatch so here we can enable detailed monitoring and then we can configure alarms for that so that whenever the threshold value reaches an alarm will be generated so this is kind of monitoring so status check there are two types of status checks so the first status check is monitor the AWS systems required to use this instance and ensure that they are functioning properly and the second one once this will be completed the second one is that your software network configurations are working fine so once these two status checks will be passed then we can access the server so as you can see two out of two checks have been passed so let's try to access this server so so before we actually try to access this server we need to convert this PEM file which we downloaded into the PuTTY enable format since I'm using Windows machine I need to convert that to PuTTY enable format so if you're using Mac or Linux then you can straight away use that PAM key but since I'm using Windows machine I'll be converting this to PuTTY and then I'll be able to access this it depends on which SSH client you are using. So I am PuTTY, so that's why I am converting it into PuTTY format. But if you are using any other SSH client, you need to convert that into that standard. So then I say, say private key. I don't want to add any passphrase. And here I'll type my new key. And by default, it will be saved as .ppk. And save this thing. So as you can see, this is the public DNS. Before you actually try to connect with this thing copy this thing and paste it here in the putty terminal go to ssh browse this ppk file and click on open and here you have to specify the username and see you have logged into the server so if you right click on this instance and click on connect so here you can see this is the username which has been created by default 
So for most Red Hat and CentOS based system, this is the standard user which got created. So this is how you can create an instance and connect with that. Now a couple of more things which I would like to tell you here is, the one thing is EBS. So a couple of so a couple of more things that I would like to tell you here is first is elastic IPs. So Amazon already provided you one public DNS, but if you need more public IPs, then you can do so using elastic IPs. So, so go to elastic IP and click on allocate new address. Once you have this new address, you can attach it with any of the running instance and here you select the instance ID and yes associate as you can see this IP address has been attached with this instance and now you can access this instance using this public DNS of new elastic IP you can assign as many IPs as you want for your server only thing that Amazon does is they're gonna charge you extra for every IP which you provide to your instance and all the data transfer that takes place on each elastic IP that is also chargeable so that's all for EC2 stay tuned for more videos thanks for watching guys